What is up, YouTube family and all Muscle Garage family? We are back with another YouTube video, and I'm so excited to be making another video for you guys. Uh, it's felt like forever, and it's only been like a, just over, I think, a month from the last video that we made on putting that dual steering stabilizer in. Well, we got something else in store. Now, you know, like I said in the last video, when I put those... Um, uh, the dual steering stabilizers on, stabilizers on this truck, it definitely helped with the ride quality with having these wider wheels and this lift kit and everything else on. But there's a big consequence to running wheels that thick on this truck. So what we are going to do today to this truck, and the real consequences is if you can see it, looking down the side here, does my front wheel look odd I don't know if you can really see it or not but you might not be able to see it but it's cambered so that's a consequence of running wide wheels is one the camber and obviously you know that's something you can get fixed while doing an alignment but the problem with this truck specifically on this one is that this did not come with camber caster adjustments so they couldn't do the camber or caster adjustment on the alignment. So it's typically, it's just sitting there like that. Now I did buy parts to fix that so that I can self adjust it and then do it myself and completely fix that camber caster, which is going to save my tires, which I need to get done ASAP. But another big consequence of running wide wheels like this and putting a lift kit on this truck and doing all the things that I've been saying is the consequences is the ball joints. The ball joints, the upper and lower ball joints on that side specifically, aren't shot. Um, I was talking to my one buddy who does, or is, is a full-time mechanic. He's doing his own thing now. Um, he does Maryland State Inspections, and he told me, he said, it still would pass state inspection with the play that it has, but he's like, I would recommend replacing them. So what we are doing today, and like I said, and if you look at the title of this video, the real consequences of running wide wheels is you know the ball joints and that's gonna hurt the truck so we today are gonna be replacing the ball joints on this front passenger side as well on both sides of the truck we are gonna replace the camber caster adjusting sleeve thing which i believe if i have all my parts laying around somewhere should be over here right here so we got, and I will say this one, this, look at the boxing, how it came for this ball joint. Now the packaging is fine. Everything's in the packaging. We're, we're good on that, but like, like the ball joint is still good, but I don't know, man. I was just like looking at like the packaging on this is just horrible. Moog, they, they make good parts, but. I don't think I didn't order this directly from Moog. It was off another site, but come on, guys, this, this packaging is ridiculous. Like it's beat. So either way, glad the parts are okay at least. But these are the adjusting sleeves that I was talking about. Let's try to pull it out here, like that. Seats in there like that, and from there I can adjust it. Now, based upon if I dig through here, I believe I have the documents. Cheap left front is off a degree and that right front that front passenger side that i'm talking about with the bad ball joints two and a you know, 2.3 degrees off which i have this sheet right here to help me understand where i need to adjust this so i don't need to take it into an alignment shop to do so i have this with that sheet and this alignment sheet from when they did it to and now you know we got a good idea of what how many degrees we need to adjust it and fix it so boys girls whoever's watching this that is what we're doing today consequences of running wide wheels so first things first i'm gonna get this thing jacked up and i'm gonna get to working on this side specifically because like i said i gotta replace the ball joints on this and place that camber caster sleep so our adjustment thing i don't i don't know what you can say the camber caster adjuster so something like that but that is something i gotta replace on this side first and i need to get this side for, done first once we have that done, we'll move over to the other side, get that other camber caster adjusting thing, whatever you want to call it, done. Then we're finished and we can wrap it up. But first things first, let's get this thing jacked up. Catch you there. 
All right, y'all. So, quick little update for you. So, I got the wheel off. As you can see right there, I got I got the wheel off. Now, <clears throat> the wheel was super easy. Got it right off. But then on the spacer that I have, the nuts on the spacer are, I think, a 19 millimeter. I don't have an impact 19 millimeter socket. So I was like, I don't, I was like, let me just try my, my one socket I got because I got a couple of them. So I was like, let me try my one socket, regular socket. And of course you could probably tell from where this is going, the socket broke. So I had to go run out and get impact socket set because I do not have those in an impact socket. So now we're sitting here. We finally got the spacer off. We got the wheel off and this took me way longer than expected just to get the one wheel off and the one spacer off. So that's off. Now we got to get to pulling the brakes off. So the caliper needs to come off, the caliper bracket needs to come off, and the rotor needs to come off. And the thing about these trucks specifically, and you guys may or may not know this, whoop, you guys may or may not know this, but the brakes itself, the rotors have bearings already in them. So instead of having your wheel bearing on your, you know, on your hub or anything like that, it's just the rotor has its own bearings in it and it's on the spindle. So we're pretty much getting all the brakes off of it now. And once the brakes are off, then we should be left to the spindle. Once we're at the spindle, that's where the ball joints, upper and lower ball joints are on. And then we'll go from there, we'll get using the ball joint press that I got this morning, because uh, I don't have one of those either. Uh, and then I'm gonna pull, pull these ball joints out. And my buddy Nick's gonna be coming a little later too. So he should be helping with filming and also helping out here. So we're gonna pull these brakes off like i said we got the wheel we got the spacer off we're gonna pull the brakes off and then i'll check in with you guys once we get to the spindle here we got yeah the rotor they came off and like i said it's got that three the like the the bearing comes inside of the whatchamacallit the the, the rotor so this all came off there's the bearing that cotter pin i was talking about the knot that holds on the bearing the washer and then i took the brakes off caliper bracket pig pads dust cover uh all that is off now we're here at the spindle so what we need to do to get this spindle off to be able to get that ball joint and that ball joint down there the upper and lower ball joints all right guys i got uh nikki b here we have installed the steering uh what is this the knuckle or the what did I call this? The, what did I call it? The spindle, the spindle. So we installed the st spindle somewhat back in. We got the ball joints in, the new ball joints, which uh, took some figuring out how to use a ball joint press because I've never used it before, but we got it. So the lower one's in, upper one's in. We just kind of mocked up the, the tie rod back on there. The next thing that we need to do is put the camber caster adjusting sleeve thing up here. Now, this is where it's gonna take some figuring out to do, I'd say, where we gotta do, look at the chart that comes with it and understand from what I did on the alignment, how many degrees I was off. And I think on this side, it was 2.3 degrees negative for camber. So we're gonna have to take that, look at the chart that comes with it, and then try to adjust it so that we fix it positive to 2.3 degrees. So we're gonna tighten these up and then we're gonna start working on this top one here and getting a line. So I'll check back in with you then. We're now at the next day. This took way longer than expected to get just the one side, the front passenger side done, which the reason why it took so long. So if you look at that last clip that I showed you, we reinstalled the ball joints. I think one of my clips had cut out, something was up with my video, uh, but we were able to take the spindle out, get those castle nuts off of both the tie rod and the lower ball joint, and then take the original camber caster uh, out and then pull the whole uh, spindle off. And then we're able to use a ball joint press, press the bottom ball joint out, then the top ball joint. Um, and then from there, we were able to press back in the new ones. That was relatively quick. Um, take some it took some figuring out a little bit on which cups and stuff to use on the ball joint press because I've never done it before and like adapter plates and stuff figured it out we got it uh the ball joints back on the spindle and then we, re we put the spindle back on which didn't take that long the part that took us forever 
was the camber caster adjusting one. Uh, that we were trying to figure out on how to to adjust it properly, uh, just so that it was not instead of it being negative two point three degrees camber, we were able to bring it back two point three degrees or two and a quarter or something like that. So what we did was we were we slid the sleeve in, and then we tried adjusting it while it was in there and it would not adjust so we were confused as to why and we think it was because the upper ball joint wasn't like freely moving with it to adjust it so what we did instead was preset it dropped it in how it's supposed to go in after the adjustings once it's in we got it in and guys it, it this has made a huge difference i mean I'll, I'll show you here in a second so let me flip around the camera on and i'll show you guys I think that's a lot better, if you ask me. A lot better. No more camber. At least on this side. So like I was saying, guys, that camber caster thing was the pain of getting this all done. Uh, this is what took the longest part. So now it's all aligned. It's all done on this side. The truck looks... Hold on, let me show you real quickly. The truck looks a lot better now especially with the front wheels. I mean, they were really cambered, so it looked really bad. But that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, this that's the consequences of running wide wheels, especially when you're running 14 wides in an old truck like this. Ball joints are going to go. I mean, at one point, at some point, they're going to go. And then, at, like I said, that's why I decided to do this one, because this one had some play. The other one doesn't. They're still good. But I also... I also wanted to give you guys an update because it's been some time since I last posted um, a video. And I really wanted to do this and make a video for you guys on, you know, what will happen if you guys are on wide wheels on your trucks. You might most likely will have to be replacing a lot of steering components and a lot of these ball joints like tie rods, stuff like that, just because it puts so much stress on them. So I highly recommend it whenever you do a lift kit or you do wheels and tires to depending on the size wheels and tires, I should say too. You know, if you're going with something like 10 wides or something like that, but 12 wides, even okay sometimes, but definitely like when you're pushing it to 14 wides and stuff, you're putting a lot of stress on those components. So I highly suggest you doing them. I did it on the one side. I still got to do the driver side of just replacing the camber caster, which again, that takes a while, but uh, we were able to do it. Now, biggest update and why I have not posted. I'm standing right here in front of my new house and part of all the, the new all muscle garage so that's that's it guys i mean i've been taking this it's been a lot of time just uh trying to get moved in settled in dealing with a lot of this stuff and that's why it's been taking me so long to put out some more content for you guys. And then I will say this too. It is going to be slowing down the process of putting out content. I mean, I plan to still do so, but I got more bills to pay. I'm not exactly going to have the money like I did when I didn't have those bills. So now we have more bills, but I'm happy we have a new house and we have, like I said, a new all muscle garage. So I'm super happy that I'm here. I'm thankful that I'm here. And I'm thankful for you guys that are watching. I saw our last video hit over 100 views, which is, I didn't even think that I would have done that within my first, not even 10 videos that I would hit 100 views on a video. So that it's all because of you guys and your support and you guys sharing the video or uh, posting it on your stories. I know a couple of my friends have done that for me, which is super nice of them to do. And I can't be any more thankful for them on doing that. Now, like I said, guys, I've been busy with this, the house, doing things around the house, projects and stuff. Um, now, <laughs> she's my girlfriend watching me wondering why I'm out here filming. But yeah, guys, I mean, that's what I've been doing is working on the house, the little projects, little things like that, um, getting settled in. And then finally got the time this weekend to be able to do this and make some videos for you guys. Um, I have big plans for this this channel and I've been talking with some of my friends and coming up with ideas of things. And I think there's really good content that we are gonna be making and something that I don't think we really, you people really see often, which I think we're gonna do. It's gonna be a little different and that's what I wanna be is a little different. But I also wanna just share my experiences with you guys. Um, 
like I said, you know, I I truly enjoy doing this stuff and working on vehicles. I may not be the most mechanically inclined person. I have a good knowledge of things. Good enough knowledge, just put it that way. To be able to do things on my own and figure it out. But for the majority of the time, you know, like I do have friends that are mechanics. I have family that's mechanics, so they help me out a lot. Um, and I can't be thankful for them. I can't be thankful enough for them too. So either way, guys, definitely plan to make more content for you guys. And I even probably think there might be other kind of content that's coming too. But either way, still plan to keep it, uh, keep you guys in the loop with things going on with me. Keep you updated as well as post more content on the truck, on the Mustang. Now, I want to hear from you too. Drop a comment below. What do you want to see next? Do you want to see something done to the truck? Or do you want to see something done to the Mustang? Because we haven't done anything on the Mustang for quite a while on this channel. So, we've been doing everything to this truck. So, let me know what your thoughts are. Because I'm in between two things. One, doing something for that. And then doing something for this. But I need you... And it has to do with something with noise. So, you guys, let me know in the comment section what you guys think should be done next on the vehicles. Alrighty? So... That's it, guys. That's a wrap on today's video. Thank you again for joining and watching this uh, video as well. And I hope you guys learned something from this on, you know, what would happen if you guys decide to run wide wheels and run a lift like this, on, especially on an older truck like this. Like, So, hope you guys picked something up for it. I hope it was helpful. Um, again, if you guys uh, could, like, share, drop drop a comment, subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. And like I, like I said, I want to take you guys on this journey with me. And grow with you guys so um and just share my experiences and connect with you guys so that's it for me guys we'll catch you back on the next video